Hello, let's do an update on the garden and see how things are growing. These are the potato plants. And we got some flowers on the potato plants. There's a late bloomer. These are the beets. Hopefully the squirrels don't eat them all on me. There was a squirrel in the garden the other day. I had to chase them out. And we have the tomato plants. Got the cages up for them. Got some cabbage plants here, white cabbage. And look at the peas growing. This row here, cucumbers, and when I planted them, I don't think the soil was quite right with temperature wise. So I had to replant. Hopefully those take. Here I have the strawberry patch. I've already harvested a bunch of strawberries from here. When I started these, I only had, I think it was only six plants. And they spread pretty fast. I've got some pumpkins growing here. And then down there I have butternut squash. This row here are carrots and as you can see I have some weeding to do again. I do that all by hand. Here I have lettuce, collards, and spinach growing. They are doing awesome. <clears throat> and actually this was the first year that I planted some lettuce. These are the beans. They're coming up nice. Last year I had put up my wooden trellis but because it gets so windy out here and the weight, the weight of them, it, the wind kept knocking it down. So I did have a couple more plants where I just used the tomato cages and it, it worked fine. Here I got a couple more tomato plants. And some cabbage. And then over here I have all my pepper plants. And some onions. Looks like I'm going to have to take the cans away here. I had those when they were really little and I put them in. It helps <clears throat> protect them from the wind and if it gets a little chilly. But now it's, it's pretty warm so I'm going to be taking those away. <clears throat> so yeah, everything's going good with the garden. I think the hardest part, and everybody would agree, is the weeding. And I do everything naturally, so it's a lot of work, but I get pretty good results. And we'll be doing some canning. <clears throat> I have never fermented. I will be doing a little of that. These are my beautiful peony bushes I planted about two years ago. And this is the first year I've gotten these beautiful blossoms. And they smell wonderful. 
That one, the other one over there is a little bit bigger than this one. I love flowers. And I try to, I do a lot of flowers because the bees are attracted to them and they help pollinate. This was an old weeping willow tree that uh, had died and cut it down. Don't know why it happened, but it is what it is. But I always grow sunflowers over here. And that's, let me get out of the way. That's these coming up here. And then I also plant morning glories around in them because they grow up on the, the sunflowers. And if you really wanted to get creative, I have a few sunflowers in the garden. Um, you know, like the cucumbers and stuff, they'll they'll use it as a trellis. You know, they'll grow up on the, the sunflower. They, they got big, thick stalks on them so they can handle it. The only thing I get a little worried about putting the sunflowers in the garden is the squirrels like them a little too much. So, not sure if I'm going to keep them in there or not. But this is my old apple tree. Anyway, and that tree over there is an old oak tree. That's a box elder. And we have spruce trees aligned here. And they were planted in 1977. Uh, they're getting pretty old now. And if your other trees block the light, you can kill them. But they're getting pretty old. Here are some wildflowers I planted uh, about a year ago, just by seed. I love the color. And I couldn't tell you what kind they are. I mean, I, I could use an app that I have to tell you what kind of flowers they are, if you like them. This is a wine rose bush that I planted, oh, years ago. I've got two of them. The other one's down there. It's a little bit bigger. And I have peonies in here. I have rose, crawling roses different types. I don't know if I'm going to keep the roses though. They're kind of uh, finicky. And the thorns. Uh, I'm not sure about those thorns. Those, once they get you and you're weeding in here, it hurts. Here's the gladiola bulbs that I was planting. Gladiolas. Those are really tall flowers. They're beautiful. Oh, look at that. A dragonfly. And I have morning glories in here that I planted all along the side. There's a trellis here. And that'll grow up all the way on here. Beautiful purple and blue flowers. And I have other fruit trees. I have a pear tree and a peach tree. Last year I planted a Concord grape. I'm going to have to gonna have to uh, put up a trellis for it here soon but this is my favorite part here is these beautiful maple trees right next to the spruce trees Nice shaded area.
That's a baby ash tree there. It came from the property. Didn't buy it. This one is a black walnut tree. My husband wanted one. I'm not a big fan. So the deer like to attack that tree quite a bit. They rub their antlers on it a lot and see if it turns out all right. This is an aspen tree. And they get about 200 feet tall. I don't know if you can see it in the shade. That'll be a really tall tree if it grows up. I know the deer around here love to munch on that tree. It's been a battle. I mean, it literally should be a lot taller than this now, but the, the deer always, you know, they're always chewing on it. You know, I could put a cage around it, and I've seen other things online of how to deter them, but I'm just going to let it be. If it doesn't make it, then, then that's it. I mean, I don't want to go too crazy just trying to get this tree to grow we'll see what happens it's doing pretty good right now little maple tree from the from the yard we just pulled where I live these grow very fast easy to grow and they make a mess they drop a lot of branches they have these long, wispy branches, those maple trees, the silver maples do. This is a sugar maple, different type of maple tree. And for some reason, it's having a problem. I'm not quite sure what is going on with it. The, this is a uh, sugar, no, silver maple. My husband pulled this from the back of the garage and look at how big this tree has gotten. It was, uh, uh, this is how fast these trees grow. It was just a baby when he put it there and it's pretty big. It's getting there. Here's another sugar maple. This one's really healthy. This one's doing very well. It must like the soil and get lots, it gets enough sunlight. Another sugar maple. So we got another line of trees. We just recently had to cut some uh, maples down that were right behind the shed because you don't want your trees too close to your structures. They can uh, do some serious damage. Right along down here on this side. These are all maples, silver maples growing from uh, its parent plants on the property. And uh, are getting pretty big and what I'm gonna have to do is go along here and just decide what to keep like this one I might keep and cut a bunch of these down because uh, I cannot have all these baby trees growing right next to each other it's it's good for a windbreak but baby trees turn into big trees and turns into a giant nightmare. They won't be as healthy because they're too close or competing for the, the sunlight and it, you know it's just best to go along and take a few down here and there and, and choose, you know it's just I'm going to choose which ones to keep let them grow because the, like I said these spruce trees up here they are not going to be around much longer they are reaching the end of their life. Yeah. So 
well, I hope I didn't uh, bore you too much, but this is the lifestyle that I love. I love, and I love trees and plants, love gardening, all that kind of stuff. Even the birds that are singing in the trees. It's very peaceful. Till next time, take care.